racing to the 2020 Kentucky Derby, and this time it's opening day at the Spa, Saratoga. It's the nine furlong Peter Pan Stakes. We have a field of nine set up, and traditionally the Peter Pan Stakes is a prep for the Belmont, but this year it's a 50-point win-in-your-in race for the Kentucky Derby. Three Uncle Moe's highlight this little lightly raced, uh, kind of interesting field here. Starting off with Mo Hawk, a $925,000 yearling purchase. This horse had a nice win in his debut at La uh, La Salle and uh, ran fast that day, and he seems to be built more like a sprinter. He ran, went up against a tough sprinter, Ragtime Blues, a couple of races back, and then finally got back on the winning end last race out, but that was at a mile on the turf. I think their plan is to go to the lead from that rail spot, and the truth, Joel Rosario rides. Country Grammar comes into this race. You know, a better-than-looked effort last time out against the runaway winner, Tap It to Win, who came back to run and set the pace on the Belmont Stakes. Country Grammar, after a long layoff, ran a competitive fifth race. He was involved in that second, third, fourth, fifth place finish. There was four horses on the line, and he ended up run running fifth of those four horses. It easily could have been a second place finish. The horse that did finish second in that race, Candy Tycoon, is in this race. Country Grammar gets it's Irad Ortiz, a jockey switch from Castellano, who's going to take care of Cairo in this race. Country Grammar, I think he's capable of kind of breaking out with a performance here. He had a long layoff after his maiden victory, then a long layoff from that race up to June 4th. He's been working steadily since then. Pedigree says he'll run all day long. I like the uh, tonalist breeding on the sire side and then adding some speed forestry on that mare side. Country Grammar worth a long look here in the Peter Pan. Modernist is going to be your favorite. Has some Kentucky Derby points. Disappointed in the Belmont Stakes. You know, he had a good spot. He established his position. I think he was a little bit closer to the pace than he wanted to be. He was only three lengths out after a half a mile. Now his best race was run on the front end going wire to wire. And that was back-to-back -back races when he broke his maiden and then he kind of went down to the fairgrounds, took him all the way around. The track was a little bit front running that day though. I thought the speed held well all day long on that day at the fairgrounds. So I think Modernist, you know, it seemed like he had trained well leading up into the Belmont Stakes, although he had an interesting workout pattern. He kind of looked like he had missed a work there and they were kind of always non-committal about the Belmont Stakes. So I'm not sure they were really all in and training in towards that Belmont Stakes. I think he's capable of better. He should be the favorite in this race. Celtic Striker picked up the win by 19 links the last time out. Don't be fooled. That was a match race. Two-horse field against Sonneman, who will run in the Haskell Stakes on Saturday. Uh, I think he's just a cut below these horses. Uh, this may only have a $100,000 purse, but I think these are some horses that are going to be seen in grade twos and grade three races. Candy Tycoon ran second officially in the Fountain of Youth. Ran a nice race that day. Got, again, four horses involved at the finish line for that second place placing. He got it. He's always had the pedigree. Ran well in his debut last year at Saratoga as being bet down to the favorite finish third. Took him a little bit to break his maiden. Again, I think he's another one that prefers to do his best running up near the pace. And Todd Pletcher usually does well at Saratoga. John Velasquez rides Candy Tycoon. Again, a chance of being the favorite or co-favorite is Mystic Guide. I'm not sure if it's going to be him or Modernist. Mystic Guide was bet down to the favorite the last time against Tappet to win. And he kind of ran on that day after a big victory at the fairgrounds when he won by five. He had a noticeable improvement in that second lifetime win. He went from an 83 Brisnet speed figure in his debut to a 94. Mystic Guide, Jose Ortiz rides. I really like this horse, but again, he's kind of another one whose pattern's been interrupted with the COVID situation. Situation. Again, he finally gets into a rhythm now where he gets a couple of races within six, seven ranks, uh, races of one another. I think he's capable of firing a 100 Brisnet speed figure. The mystery horse is Caracaro. Big victory in his second lifetime race. That was a 98 in January. And if he's improved at all since then, he's capable of busting out with a 100 Brisnet here. Uh, obviously got injured after that big victory. There was talk of some uh, high profile offers. Uh, I don't think he passed the vet. So Caracaro then went to the sidelines, has got a string of bullet workouts in the holster, a nice workout, three back when he ran 114-1 for six furlongs. Then he went a 111 and change at Gulfstream Park West, came back with a five furlong workout, and then blew out three furlongs on Sunday. Caracaro with Javier Castellano. These connections made it to the 
Derby last year with Bodie Express. So Cara Caro, I think a lot of upside in this horse, and that's the selection for me in this race. I also like Country Grammar a little bit. Chestertown, the one thing about him is he'll take a lot of money. Big, uh, expensive yearling price, $2 million. So he gets bet down every race. Just as a plotter, uh, he'll run all day, but he'll run all day at a slower speed than the rest of them. I just can't see a scenario here where he can outrun horses like Cara Caro or even the uh, Candy Tycoon, or even a horse from the outside like Cazzarelli. Cazzarelli rounds out the field. He is coming in off a string of losses after picking up back-to-back -back wins. Uh, picked up a $50,000 claiming win at Oakland Park. Now that was a tough meet this year with a lot of good horses, but I think he is just a little cut below. Again, country grammar, modernist, and mystic guide. Should be an interesting race. I could see one of these horses kind of busting out and going to the Kentucky Derby. You've got modernist, you've got a horse like mystic guide, Kara Carroll, and then even the possibility of country grammar still with a little bit of upside long term. Who do you like in the Peter Pan? Leave a comment below, smash that like button, and remember, we're racing you through the Saratoga Stakes Meet, the Breeders' Cup 2020 now coming into focus, and the 2020 Kentucky Derby.